Hey, this is Dano F from Tractor DJ Course. In this video, I will share some battle tested tips and tricks how to not screw up your next gig. So, there are three times when you can screw up your gig before, during, and after the gig. Let's talk about gig preparation first. First of all, you need to agree on start time duration. Make sure you know for how long the booker wants you to play. Agree on the genre and specific tracks. Whatever the club manager or booker or event manager wants you to play at this gig, make sure you find out as much as you can about it. Maybe he wants you just to play what you like, that's fine. But everybody has expectations and you need to find out what these expectations are. Agree on payment terms. I made this mistake many times, assuming I would get paid soon enough, but guess what? After the gig, bookers tend to become very non-responsive. They don't answer your calls anymore and they don't respond to your messages. So unless you have a long-term agreement, I suggest you get paid at the venue before you leave. That will spare you a lot of hassle chasing your money, which is not a good thing to spend your time on. Make sure you know exactly what equipment is present at the club. Make sure there is space for you to place your equipment if you bring your own equipment like your tractor controller and your laptop. And of course you have to be familiar with the club gear if you're not bringing your own. Check the club or the venue if there are events previous to your gig. I mean if it's a club obviously they will have regular gigs and uh, especially the same weekday like your gig. Check it out, go listen to the DJ, see what they're playing because this will be what the crowd will expect from you to play in most cases. So make sure you're familiar with the crowd, maybe say hi to the bar people and get as much info as possible. So before the gig, your main job is to do research and to find out all there is to find out about this venue and about what is expected from you, including the gear to bring and to operate with. Based on this information, you will prepare your set. So now as you know what is expected from you, what kind of music, you will prepare your sets accordingly and you will make sure you have at least two times the play time which you have to play at the venue. So if your gig is two hours, make sure you prepare playlists for at least four hours so you can be flexible and maybe change directions during your set. Pack your gig bag with all you need, plus spare parts, um, cables tend to give up in the most inconvenient moments. So I always bring a second USB cable and a spare power adapter for my laptop. The third part of your preparation before the gig is to promote your event. Please note, the sad truth is club managers don't care about your music they care about their bar sales. So if you can bring some drinking crowd, you can play what you want and you'll most likely get a follow-up gig. So promote your event on social media and invite at least 10 people personally. Call them, text them, the more the better. Remember, your main job is to make this event happen, to bring people and a big following is one of the biggest assets you can have as a DJ. So don't simply rely on your mixing skills and on your music. Make sure you bring people. Lastly, be on time, show up one hour early, dress up to the occasion. Part two, during the gig. Obviously, in order to earn your DJ title, you have to do a good job playing your set and that's what I teach in my Tractor DJ course. So if you're not sure how to do that, go join our members area. Interact with the audience. 
Don't stare at your laptop. I've seen so many DJs standing there not moving at all, staring at their laptop like deer in the headlights. That's not a good performance. You have to show that you are enjoying what you're doing. You have to spread some positive vibe. You have to smile, you have to look around, you have to connect with the audience. That's your job. You're an entertainer. You're not a technician fixing some mixing problems. Dealing with song requests. Dealing with song requests in the wrong way can screw up your entire gig. Most of the time people will want you to play something that you don't like. And most likely you won't have it even. So this is how I deal with song requests. I smile and then I say, that's a great song. Let me check if I have it with me. If I find it, I will play it. That's how you take off the heat of yourself to play it right now. So you have to check first if you have this song or not. If you don't have it, well, that's not a big problem. Everybody will understand that you don't have every song in the world with you. So that's okay. So don't reject their song request. Don't say this is something you don't want to play or this is like below your standards. Just uh, comply and be willing to play, but obviously you won't play it because you don't have it. Or even if you happen to have something you don't want to play, you just don't play it and you pretend you don't have it. So that's the exit. You don't have this track if you don't want to play it. Well, one out of 10 requests will actually be nice and they will actually request for a song you have. So then there's no issue at all. You just go ahead and play and mix it in whenever it's convenient for you. Read the crowd and react as good as you can. Well, that's a big topic, but uh, it's also quite easy. If, as I said earlier, you have to look at the people. You have to observe how they react. Whenever I play a new track or I mix into a new track, I will look around and see uh, what is the reaction. Are people nodding to the beat? Are they moving? Are they stopping to move? So deal with the feedback and make the best of it. Navigate through your playlist, see what's working best and stick with what's working. Prepare for after gig promotion. Get some photos taken, do, take them yourself. Show people having fun dancing to your music. That's the best thing you can have in a photo. Record your set, which is very easy to do with Tractor. So you can use this recording for after gig promotion later. And last but not least, treat everyone with utmost respect, including the toilet cleaner. This world has enough divas and people who pretend to be something. Don't be one of those jerks. Be respectful, be friendly, treat everyone with respect and that will go a long way. So as long as you are at the venue, you just stop playing. This is the time to say thank you to the booker manager, to the person who got you the gig. Make sure to bring across your honest appreciation for this opportunity to play. Then the next day, post the pictures you have taken at the gig, upload some part of your recorded set to Mixcloud or Soundcloud, link to the recordings and make sure you get some awareness of what happened the other night, that it was a good gig and build your following. As I said, building your following is a huge or the biggest asset you can have. So don't miss out on your after gig promotion. Call up the booker or manager. Get some feedback from him. Ask him what you could do better. How was his impression? What he felt you could maybe do differently the next time. And obviously ask for follow up gigs. Make sure he knows you are interested to play another time or maybe even on a regular basis. Now go ahead and download the gig preparation checklist. I put together a PDF with all the important points in this video. And join the Tractor DJ course members area. That's where you learn how to deliver a professional DJ performance. This is Danoef, tractordjcourse.com.